Hi, uh, my name is Karthik. I am the uh, founder of uh, Embedded Gyan Technologies. So we are basically a Linux, uh, you know, training provider. So I also am also the uh, freelance consultant and uh, trainer at uh, you know, Embedded Gyan Technologies. Like, so this is a, a series of uh, videos. So wherein uh, you know we're going to be talking about uh, how to write simple uh, Linux device drivers. So. Okay, so just to get started, so this is the uh, the introduction slides, and uh, you know these slides are also available for uh, free download. So you just have to uh, go to the site and uh, request for access, and then I'll provide you the access, and you should be able to download it. So just to start with, um, you know, the uh, just a short introduction of uh, what Linux is. So this is. Uh, you know, like a very broad uh, or a top-level overview of uh, you know how a Linux system looks like. So what you see here is at the bottom you have the hardware, you know, and uh, you have a series of device drivers which actually communicate with the hardware. You have the kernel subsystem, and for any access from the application space or the user space, you know, for accessing the hardware or requesting the services of the kernel, you have to go through the system call interface. So the focus of uh, you know these slides or this the series of uh, videos that we are going to post is mostly beyond the device drivers uh, area. Like. So this is a slightly um, you know detailed uh, diagram of how a Linux uh, kernel looks like. So you, you see that you have this process management you know for creating and destroying processes, which also supports your uh, inter-process communications. Then we have this memory management uh, block, so which is basically for your um, you know, like virtual memory management and things like that. We have the file systems. So Linux has a lot of file systems like ext2, ext4, and then you know support for NTFS, FAT, FAT32, and etc. Like, so we have the file system layer, and then um, you know the file system layer in turn communicates to the block device layer driver, and which would in turn talk to your disk or the CDs. Like, we have the device control, which is primarily for accessing your character-based devices, and then the networking. Um, you know layers in the uh, in the kernel like so the focus of this videos is going to be the character device drivers so we'll basically see on how we can uh, develop simple character device drivers for you know linux okay so just to give you a short intro of what a character device driver is so so you can um, right, so before I explain the character device driver, I'd probably explain the block device drivers. Like, so I think you you have uh, used your pen drives and you know hard disk and all that. So a very simple way of understanding a block device driver is any device which has a file system on it. You know, wherein you can create directories and you can create files. So that you can treat it as block device driver. So basically, block device driver is one where you can mount a file system and have files. And then when you open the files, you have a provision of going back and forth. You know, for example, if you're watching a movie, so you have an option of either skipping a song or you know going back to a particular scene and then you know watching it again. So that's primarily what a block device driver is. It basically provides you random access, and then typically the reads from the block device driver are in chunks, so you get whole blocks. So in comparison to a block device driver, a character device driver is one wherein you access a stream of bytes. In the sense, the data gets generated and you access them as it is getting generated. A good example is a keyboard and a mouse or you know, or a webcam for that matter. So wherein the data is given to you real time and then you consume it. So there is no option for you to move back and forth. Okay. Now let's come to a you know simple loadable kernel module. So you know, like uh, so Linux has Linux so Linux kernel as such, you know, has a provision so wherein you can load a driver into the running kernel for extending the functionality of the kernel. You know, for example, so if you have a pen drive, and you know, most often we don't keep the pen drive connected to the laptops or the systems all the time. Like, so so in such a scenario, so there is no need to have the pen drive device drivers loaded into the kernel space because they're going to occupy RAM and then, you know. Uh, waste your system resources. Like, 
So what kernel provides is, the Linux kernel provides is, so when you plug in a device, so the corresponding drivers for that can be loaded dynamically and then your you know, device becomes operational. And similarly, when you unload the, I mean, when you, when you unplug the device, the kernel provides you a functionality to remove the drivers and it can free up the resources like RAM. Right? So we're gonna start this series of videos by understanding what a simple loadable kernel module is. So the way we are gonna um, you know, go through the video is, so I'm just gonna write a small program and I'll explain it as I'm writing it. Then we will load this program onto the kernel and see how it is working. Okay. So I'm gonna start with a very simple program. So I'm just I'm gonna call it as example 01 simple underscore module dot C. Okay. So, so the most commonly used Linux include files are Linux slash init.h, which has a lot of definitions for you know module modules and, and and the kernel itself, and the Linux slash module.h. Okay. So these are two, two, two main uh, you know uh, include files. So there is a function that you have to write, which is uh, which which returns an integer, and I call it as example zero one simple underscore module underscore init. It doesn't take any parameters. So I'm going to put a small print k here. I mean basically a print inside the kernel, and I call it as kernel alert inside the percentage yes function. and then return from this function. Now we'll also put another function called simple underscore module underscore exit, which also doesn't take any parameters. And I'm just gonna copy this print that we put you know, earlier into this function as well. Now I'm gonna write two macros, one called module init, and we give the name of the module init function. And then we put module exit and we give the main name of the module exit function. Okay. Now before I execute this program and show you how it works, so now let's you know see on um, uh, see it look look at a simple uh, C program like so. So I'm just going to write a small C program test.c. So we just include uh, stdio.h. Then I say init main, so I'm not going to pass any parameters to this. Then I put a printf here and say this is a test program. Okay. And I return from this function. So I can compile this test program as uh, you know, gcc test.c. The minus o is for the output file generation test.out. So this is compiled, so you would see the, the executable, which is nothing but the test.out here. And when you execute this, you see the print, right? So on a very similar lines, so what we have done is we have written a simple module, and for a simple module to be compiled, you know, on on the uh, Linux systems, you need to have the Linux build directory on which you are going to execute this module. Now, for example, I'm going to execute this module on this laptop for the demonstration. So I need the build kernel build directory for the version of the kernel that is running on this laptop. So if you type a uname minus r command, so you can see that I'm running a Linux kernel version 3.13.0 in, in a particular subversion. Like. So what I need for compiling this simple module.c is basically the directory which contains the compiled binaries for this particular version of the Linux. Right. So what we do is we write a small make file, you know, to say that I would like to compile this particular module. So I'm just going to copy the name of the, uh, the the module file that we wrote. So I just open a make file and I put a rule like obj m colon equal to, and I paste the module name and replace the dot c with a dot o extension. Uh, I'll come back and explain what we have put here, the OBJ and M and all that. So for the time being, let's see on how this thing is going to work. Like. Okay. Now, in order to build this module, so what you do is you just say make minus C, which is nothing but a change directory. And you say that I want to change my directory to lib modules dollar uname minus R. So that is nothing but my running kernel and the build directory for that. 
Now what the make utility is going to do is it's going to go to this particular build directory that's lib modules my kernel that's 3.13.0's build directory and pick up the make file from there. So that make file is going to contain pretty much all the information about my processor now whether it's an Intel processor, an AMD processor, or an ARM processor and what compilers to use like so is it, is it going to be a simple GCC or is it going to be cross compiled now, and information like that so what is the optimization that I've done to my kernel etc. Now once the minus C command goes to a, goes to the build directly and uh, you know picks up the make file I am actually not going to be building the com complete kernel but my module so in order to specify that so you put a M saying that pick up the make file from the present working directory so this syntax that I've put here, the M stands for the make file from the present working directory. So my present working directory happens to be this, training and videos. And once you say that, you say what you want to do, that's nothing but build the modules. So the moment you give this command, you see the, the build stats and you see the simple module uh, getting compiled. That's example 01 simple module getting compiled. And when you do an ls minus l, so you would see this file which is example 01 simple module dot ko. So unlike the dot out file which is an executable in the user space, a dot ko is nothing but a kernel objects, k for kernel and o for object. Now this is the module or the driver that is going to be you know inserted into the kernel space. So how do you do that? So you have to use an utility called insmod okay, and specify the module that you want to insert into the kernel space. So in our scenario it's going to be example 01 simple module.ko. But note that you are making a change to the running kernel so you would not be able to do it as a normal user hence you need the sudo permission so that you can work as a super user like. So I give sudo insmod example 01 simple module.ko so it will prompt you for the password, root password, so it give it the root password and you see that the command returns. Now in order to confirm whether this module has been successfully loaded into the kernel space, so you can use another utility called lsmod, so it's list the modules that are currently loaded in the system. So if you simply type lsmod and give an enter, so you see that there's a lot of modules that are currently loaded in my system like, and when you scroll up, you see this so you see that the example 01 simple module is also loaded into the kernel space. So insmod is a program so what it does is it picks up the you know the uh, the KO file from your hard disk copies the same into the kernel space and then does the necessary linking and then eventually calls your modules init function. Okay. Now in order to remove this module from the kernel space you do a sudo RM mod is for removing a module and give the module that you want to remove, the name of the module. So again you give a sudo because you're making changes to the kernel space. Right? Now let's look at the program that we wrote. So so what we have done is we have written two functions here. So one is module init and one is module exit. Module init is the function that is called when the module gets inserted into the kernel space. That is, you know, during the execution of the insmod command, so when the module is being copied into the kernel space, this function is finally called to initialize your module. And module exit is the function that is called when you remove the module from the kernel space. So this is called so that you can you know, basically do any cleanups that you require for your module. Like, so if in, in summary, the module init function is called when the module is loaded and you can initialize your module here. Module exit is a function that's called when the module is unloaded and you can do the cleanups here. Now the kernel does not restrict you in the type of names that you want to give for this module init and module exit functions. However, for the insmod utility to find out what is your model init function and what is your model exit functions, you have these two helper macros. So just say that my module init is nothing but this function and module exit is nothing but this function here, right? So module init happens to be example 01 simple module init and module exit happens to be example 01 simple module exit, right? So the prints that you see here, so these are the 
you know, these are very similar to your printf's that we have used in the test program, you know, in the application space. However, since you're working in the kernel space, you don't have a printf, but you have a print k, k for the kernel. And the first parameter that printf takes is basically the different alert levels. So you can say, you know, whether this is only an informational message, this is a critical message, or this is an alert message. So we're not going to go into details of the uh, different uh, um, the alert levels in this particular video. So for the time being, let's assume we have a level called kernel alert. And, um, you know, followed by that, so we have this, uh, the string here, the print string, and we have set underscore underscore function, right? So what we have effectively done is we've put a print when the module is being initialized and a print when the module is being cleaned up or, or removed from the kernel space, right? So coming back to the, you know, the make file. So what we have done here is the obj-m basically says that I want to build a module. So m basically stands for module, a loadable kernel module. And we have initialized this with you know, a file called example simple module, okay, and we put a dot o like so. The way the build system works is it generates a dot o from the corresponding dot c file, and then from the dot o it generates a dot ko file. Right? So we'll go over this. Uh, you know, the so colon equal to is nothing but an initialization operation. So you just initialize this obj if an m, you know, to a particular module that you want to build. Right? Now coming back to the module, so we have basically put these two prints here. And however, we didn't notice those prints getting displayed in, our, in the in the console. So when when we executed the program. So typically, so if you're working on a system which doesn't have a GUI, I mean a, a GUI like your Genome or Ubuntu, so then you'll be working on a terminal, and the print would come right on the terminal here. So when you do an ins mod, you would see the print eventually following the ins mod. But since I'm working on a you know GUI, so the Ubuntu based system. So what I have here is nothing but a terminal emulation, not the actual terminal, but the terminal emulation. In such a scenario, so your prints will appear in a file called var log syslog. So this is what you see in uh, the Ubuntu-based systems and in some other Debian-based systems like, um, you know, the uh, uh, Fedora and all that. So you would see it in a file called var log messages, all right? So what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to say that I want to see the tail, that's the last few lines of this of this file, and I want to follow the tail in the sense, as the file grows, I want to keep seeing the last few lines of the file. So I just typed a command called tail minus f var log syslog, and this again needs uh, super user rights, so let's give a sudo there. So this is what you see in the var log syslog now. I'm just going to open another terminal here. So you see a terminal at the bottom right. So I would say sudo in smart example 01 kvo. Prompts you for password, you give the password. So like you see there, so we have seen one more print that got added to the var log messages, which is nothing but the inside the example 01 simple module init function. So that is the function that we have written in our example program when the module gets initialized. So if I just keep it down here on the left bottom corner, so you see that the print got displayed, you know, when the module got inserted. So when you do a sudo of rm mod, so I'm typing on the, you know, the bottom right corner uh, terminal. So when I do a sudo rm mod of example 01 simple module, you see another print getting displayed in the var log syslog file corresponding to the module exit function. So don't worry about those additional prints that you see there, uh, the R syslog D and uh, anacron and all that. So so var log syslog is a file which actually which which accumulates all the prints that are generated from the kernel. So you would see a lot of prints going on in that file, and we have to focus only on the prints that we are interested in. Okay. So so that's about this uh, you know simple module um, uh, how to how to create a simple module in kernel. So effectively we did. Um, you know, we wrote a small program with a module in it and a module exit, and then we wrote a small make file. So we compiled the make file using the um, make uh, minus c command, and then uh, and then we saw how to use the ints mod utility and the rm mod utility for inserting this module into the kernel space and getting it removed from the kernel space. Okay, so uh, 
I'm going to stop this video here and then um, I'll, I'll uh, you know post the uh, series of other videos wherein we can go a little more detailed into this and what is this um, you know more about the character device drivers okay I hope you enjoy watching this video thank you